In a recent video, I covered how to create a package-based monorepo with NX, compile a package for both CommonJS and ESM, and publish it to NPM. I'll link to that in the description if you want to see how to get to this point. The example I used was a real package I was publishing for Analog.js, and although we set up vtest when creating the package, we didn't actually cover writing any tests. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we can set up some snapshot tests with vtest that cover the functionality of this package and how it basically feels like cheating because it's so easy to do. Keep in mind that snapshot tests are not a silver bullet for every testing situation, but for situations like this where we are working with some file content and expecting it to be manipulated in some specific way, it is perfect. To give some context, the basic purpose of this package is that it provides this AGX remark rehype function that will take in some options and it will return a function that can be passed a string representing the contents of some markdown file. It will then convert that markdown file into the HTML equivalent. By default, Analog uses marked for this process but this AGX remark rehype function will use the remark rehype ecosystem instead and also allow us to pass in any remark or rehype plugins we want to use. First, let's just write out some empty test cases for the things we want to cover, and then let's jump right into implementing the first test. The basic idea is that we pass some dummy markdown data that represents the case we want to test to our transform function, and then we expect the result to match the snapshot. No such snapshot exists right now, but if we run this test file, we can see that it says that a snapshot has been written. We can see that snapshot in this snapshots folder. As you can see, it associates the output of our test run with that particular test. The first time you run this test, it is just going to pass, because whatever the test outputs is going to be used for the snapshot. But if that output changes on future test runs, the test will fail. Usually I prefer a test-driven development workflow, but in this case, this was a proof of concept I happened to get working and I decided to publish it. So the function already produces the correct output. So this generated snapshot is correct. And so I don't need to do anything else here. However, if you were using a TDD workflow, then the output listed in this snapshot would be incorrect. That means your test would be passing, but the code isn't doing what you want it to, which is definitely not what you want. Snapshot tests are great for this situation too though, because then you can just modify the snapshot manually to be what you want your code to produce. This will cause your test to fail when you run it until your code starts producing output that matches the snapshot, then it will pass. Let's look at the more interesting cases now. Now we are going to supply markdown that includes characters that will break the compilation of Angular templates. For context, what is happening on the analog side of things here is that we are essentially creating the template for an Angular component using our markdown content. If that content contains characters that have special meaning in Angular templates, that could cause some issues. So we do the exact same thing again, but in our dummy content, we just supply the potentially troublesome scenario. We run the test and it will generate the snapshot for us, and I can check that the output is correct. If it wasn't correct, I could modify the snapshot to what it is supposed to be. This will cause the test to fail, and then we have a target to work toward for a fix. But in this snapshot, we can see that it is indeed escaping characters properly. Let's just go ahead and implement the rest of the boring test now. Then we will look at these last two, which are a bit more interesting and require a bit more work in our testing strategy. As you can see, we are now testing that we can embed Angular components in the markdown, and also that we can use Angular control flow syntax without the at and curly brace characters being escaped, even though these are potentially breaking characters. Angular expects these characters to be used for control flow, and so we don't want to escape them in that case. The last two tests are a bit more interesting because this package also allows supplying remark and rehype plugins that will modify the output in some way. To test this, I am just going to create some super simple dummy plugins so that we can verify they are actually being applied. The main difference between a remark plugin and a rehype plugin is that a remark plugin works by walking and modifying the markdown abstract syntax tree, and a rehype plugin runs on the HTML abstract syntax tree after the markdown tree has been passed by rehype. In both cases, my mock plugins are just replacing content with high, and if we run the test and check the snapshot, we can see these are being applied as expected. 
The Remark plugin is actually replacing more than the Rehype plugin, but that is more to do with the implementation of my Mock plugin, which I don't actually care about testing. I am only interested in testing that the plugin is applied to the content and I can see that it is. So on the surface, writing a test that will just take the output of whatever something currently does and make sure the result is the same the next time might not seem all that useful. But even that alone can actually be very useful as it can protect against regressions. If I or someone else makes some changes to this code that results in breaking characters not being escaped properly anymore, then that is something we want to know about and with these tests we will. There is also a downside here that we can get some false positives. Sometimes some unimportant formatting change might result in a snapshot failing when it doesn't really need to. In this case you will need to pass the update flag when running the test to update the snapshot if the new output should still be considered correct. A bit annoying but still much better than shipping broken code. If you found this video helpful and would like to see more like it, consider a like or subscribe before you go and I hope to see you back here again.